Did you notice in the first reading that the first circle in the command of the Lord given towards the end of the Gospel of St. Luke, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and eventually in the uttermost parts of the world is being realized. This Philip, we presume is one of the apostles, is to be found in a Samaritan town. We notice too that as in the case of the parable of the Good Samaritan, whereas the priest and Levite passed by on the other side, hardened to grace, Samaria, in juxtaposition to what has just happened, where the Jews have given the gospel a hard time, opens up and receives grace. There were, for example, unclean spirits that came shrieking out of many people who were possessed and several paralytics and cripples were cured. There was great rejoicing in that town as a result. Now, these spirits are around. They appear in several parts, not only of the Acts, but also of the Gospels themselves. Satan is the most brilliant of <coughs> spirits in essence by the very fact that that's how he ended up where he is. He was the second in glory in the universe. God had given him great glory and power and he in the beginning of that cosmic history had one thought, the original pride of the demonic powers. And because of his full and complete responsibility, it was irreversible, and so were the consequences. Hell did not <coughs> exist until that moment. It came into being as the only place that he could find a home in. And so, at that point, St. Michael the Archangel was given greater power, and we are told that there was a cosmic battle. Because that Satan was trying to get all the angels and to reign against the Creator. He did not think that there was going to be a new creation of hell, which was unthinkable. There was only harmony in the universe until then. But just think of the large number, therefore, if there's a third, the large number among these millions and millions of fallen spirits who are still there, somewhere in the universe. Now, they're still around. In our time, it seems they've been given not less, but more freedom. And partly because of the way in which he himself has been acting so efficiently that the barrage of resistance within the Catholic Church, the one true church founded by our Saviour, used to offer, it's no longer being so efficacious. Why? Because, unfortunately, he has influenced people of influence so as to get half-truths mingled with truths which have an effect on people's comportment and eventually on the whole life of the mystical body. Reduction in the contemplative life is one big one. Depleting the cloisters, taking away from the discipline in the cloisters which had been the invisible barrage against the demons because these were victim souls, men and women and large numbers of the same doing nothing but saving the world invisibly by being on the cross with Christ. Now, look around. Very few young people even think of ever entering a cloister. Hence, they're closing. And those who do find that the discipline has come way down, except in certain ones, therefore it's not worth it, because what's the point of going in to watch more television? See how efficient the devil is. Supernatural means withdrawn means that there's a withdrawal also of merit and counterbalancing all that's not right. It's just not happening. Now, also, there is far more. There is a reduction in the interior life of the mystical body on the level of the people at large. People, even good people, are not aware that every time that they expose themselves 
to infested channels, they are colluding with these same spirits. And one only has to open one's ears to perceive <coughs> that the devil is actually conquering. He is conquering Catholic Ireland. All you have to open your ears to is the average conversation, and what do you find? Good Catholics are repeating the norms given to them by RTE, and very, very few are able to react or think for themselves. It's so massively pumped at them that they've all got the same message. Do you see how clever the devil is? But it doesn't stop there. You've got a very large number of extremely respectable Catholics who are spending large portions of their night, especially, in channels of communication which are gigantically demon-infested, I mean internet. You know that the most visited sites are the hard porno ones. That's not indifferent. And you would be surprised if you had an inkling of the number of respectable people who are now and again, to say the least, googling the worst. It's so private and discreet. Now that's damaging hugely the interior life of souls and therefore of the mystical body. And these people are coming quite happily to the sacraments. Now that's something which <coughs> the angels are observing with tears. We are observing in a very short time a gigantic falling away from the sacrament of reconciliation and a situation where in practice Holy Communion is on demand, a slot machine. How? Because the priest no longer knows who's coming up. You know why, don't you? This delegation, massively. What can a lay person do? A lay person knows full well that so-and-so is living with a partner. What does the lay person do? Doesn't bat an eyelid. Doesn't even report it. Because if the priest doesn't know, he can't react. And the correct way of reacting is discreetly and privately to make it known individually and without drawing attention with great courtesy, for the good of the soul, the situation with regard to access to Holy Communion. It cannot happen if the priest does not know. Now, if we have a situation where the sacraments are being received without grace, the Lord, in the midst of his own house, is being insulted. And there are other things which are making it very difficult for the law to get through. I mentioned right at the beginning one big area. It's the very essence of our life as Catholics, the moment of culmination in the contact between the soul and its maker at Holy Communion. Observe how in practice it is happening. Not everywhere, but massively, at least in Ireland, that is the case. The fear that Holy Communion should last more than, at most, four or five minutes, is such that anything and everything is done rather than protracted. <coughs> and not only that, but many, many situations arise where before even the post-communion prayer, the bulletin is already being read from the ambo. The situation, therefore, of showing by one's comportment that the essence of the parish life is what happens outside the church, bypassing the essence, going to the periphery, even at the point of the essence itself. God is not able to reign because he has not got space or freedom to speak. We are talking him out. We are crowding out Christ from his church. Now, if you don't believe me, observe in your parish how quickly Holy Communion is done. Go to a charismatic assembly properly done, what do you find? Healing happens on every level. They know how to produce an atmosphere of sustained peace and interiority with gentle music, repetitive singing, even passive openness to beauty which passes over their head, but which actually has a deeply profound effect on the soul. <coughs> I'm coming to another area. The soul's have brought into church what they have got outside church. Observe what happens in the realm of the way we worship. It has become more of what we have outside. 
a non-stoppable flow of what? Words. Words, words, words. Not a pause from beginning to end. God hasn't a chance to speak. We're not able to close our mouth all the time we're in church. And as soon as the dismissal is given by the priest, they're at it again, but amongst themselves, when God is in their heart. More words. And even when they're in church, rather than prepare a room for them, for the Lord in their hearts, they're already starting to talk about the weather to the person in the pew next to them. Words. God is a God of silence. God has a need for our silence to get a word in. Otherwise, we're crowding him out. But there's more. The norm of what is outside has crept in on other levels as well. Notice how, in practice, with regard to the creation of an atmosphere, the atmosphere has become very similar to what is outside. Not in every parish, certainly not in every convent, but in many, the level of creation of beauty is very limited. And often it reaches a point of desiring to satisfy the latest craze and crave, often of the young. But that is not the highest level of our tradition. And the result is that we do not anymore, very often, have the capacity to create beauty. Now, observe. When it comes to creating beauty in church, is it a healing beauty? Are we able to sustain that same atmosphere as even our charismatic friends? Do we know what harmony is? Do we know what true beauty is of an instrumental nature? Do we know what the depth of words are in poetry and genuine praise? Or are we content with the quick, the cheap, the easy and the shoddy, as long as it happens as quickly as possible? And I'm saying something very serious, because I am no longer, for instance now, in my conscience, able to participate in the Easter Vigil in my own parish for this simple reason that it has become so modern that Afro-Caribbean song, with clapping and all the rest of it, has taken its place in the high point of the liturgical ear over all that we've received in 2,000 years. The exalted no longer being sung, but some interesting modern song in its place, and things of a Caribbean nature taking place in the itself, so jazzy and so noisy, it actually disrupts completely what is happening at that holy and nuptial moment between Christ and his people. And that is a good parish. Now, what I'm saying is this, my friends. We have succeeded in bringing so much of what is outside into church that we have driven what God has for us out of it, and we have become poor as a result. We have no longer access to anything greater than the banal and the daily. We have no access to anything which raises our heart and mind as true beauty can. Because true beauty is an echo of the angels and the heavenly spheres and actually heals on a very profound level. And if we cannot create it, we ourselves have damaged our life. Now, I want to finish with one last point. It's this. Since I've touched on music and also on the modern media, both internet and television, there is something I would like you to be aware of. I'm reading right now chunks of a book which study in depth what is happening in the specific area of music. The devil knows that he has to get people as young as he can. <coughs> you children, listen, this concerns you too because he's trying to get as quickly as he can the age of innocence down, 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 so that they get corrupted as soon as possible. And his great means is music. Now, studies are being done on modern music. When we were growing up, there was that big change in style, but it was still music, and good music, quite a lot of it. Whatever you say, the Beatles were able to produce good music when they were on their best. Because harmony and notes which function and voices able to use them combined with good beat 
and good melodies actually do work and still send the adrenaline in a good way. But there has been, and if you observe, from that period onwards, a progressive change to the situation in 2013 where music is understood in a different way. And woe be time a young person who dares to declare himself for anything more ancient. What is going on in the music sphere today? Listen carefully if you have a chance or if you are blind to on a bus or whatever or in some situation where against your will it happens to you to some of the things that are being uttered in the lyrics of today. There are messages in there which can only come directly from the jaws of hell. There are strange messages coming to the youth, e.g. the alternative of suicide. There was a terrible suicide not far away these last days, and one of my friends was in the morgue in Navan the other day, and there were eight bodies, eight corpses in the morgue, only two of them were natural deaths. And most of these would be youngish. One was buried today, not far from here. He was about 32. Just had a child. And he was also, from what I make out, linked with some form of cyber bullying again. This thing, the screen, is becoming lethal. People are not aware that when they plug into internet, they can be plugging into the jaws of hell. And these are the ways that demons are coming into souls. They're coming out of screens. And there has been a case of a Korean artist who was taken into the beyond in some kind of ecstatic taste, either death or whatever, but she was allowed to see the beyond. And the Lord took her, because she was a Christian believer and a great artist, and she was to come back and paint what she saw. And one of the scenes that she has painted, it's on YouTube, is what television does. The demons, out of a bad program, can come out of the screen into the soul and contaminate it. And they can have control then over the will and the imagination. For things seen are seen forevermore. Now be careful, my friends, because this is now the present possession of the demon. It's modern means, and he's far more clever than we are. He's one step ahead, and he's got us. He's got us when we're weak. Come this way. I've got a good solution for you to end your problems. The death of a person under his own hands is the ultimate victory of the enemy of the soul. And no one says it. Not saying where they're going, but I'm just saying the devil is not absent from these cases, come this way. Now, my friends, we're up against it because very few truths are heard in church every now. What I would suggest to you is make up for it. How? With the same means used in reverse. Because Christians now have discovered they can actually be present in the midst of this through the good use of media, internet, YouTubes, pass each other around, YouTubes and DVDs, things which actually speak correct things about God. They are now the counterbalancing effect. Don't let the demon influence everyone, including yourselves. Be free and don't expose yourself to these poisonous fumes of the air coming all the time from RTE, both television and radio. Every time you do, you're colluding, you're giving a stage and you don't have to. Put on EWTN, look for a good YouTube if you want a screen before you, but choose and be in control, not control. That's all that RTE in there for the devil wants. Absorb our rays. Be in control of your will and of your time and of your imagination and of your interior world. For the soul has its portals and they are the eyes. And through these eyes come in all these demonic suggestions to reign from within and gain control. I'll just finish. I happen to have a letter to the post. I thought, what's this about? And it was from England. So I opened it. Oh, there's a bit of me in here. So I, they do something I'd written. But uh, it was precisely about this issue there. They'd liked it and used it. So anyway, I just came across this. Uh, it's not exactly what it's, you'll find all this on my website. It's on the, one of the YouTubes I made. It's all about spiritual combat. 
But anyway, it finishes on this, you see. Hell. Uh, what it's all about. Because the devil is so envious that he can't bear that others should have his place. So he tries to get us, you see. That's what it's all about. He can't bear that we should take the thrones that he's lost. So all the time he's trying to get his, his revenge through getting us. Now I'll just finish with a few lines from this, which are years ago, but it's still valid. There is a place beyond geography where pain is heard no more, where pain is all that can be heard forevermore to be the echo of the last unvoiced call, no larynx made, where fade the very sounds that matter for a while, for matter there is none, and where these lie, yond sleep's sweet sour bounds, there is a rest that is best taken there. Now this was written in the context of graveyards, which looks so quiet. O oh, little field of stones, each silently awake upon strange rest. A story vast hangs on your chiselled words. And quietly, a pendulum rocks onwards at the last. Amen for a amen. So shall it be. Amen. For a. Amen. It shall.